Hey everybody, welcome back to Thursday's Theology. Um, so I'm not going to lie to you, uh, last week we left off at a point where I was trying to blow up a truck and jump on some rocks and it was frustrating me. So I ended up just uh, getting past that little part so I wouldn't be frustrated uh, coming into this week's episode. So uh, all that to say, welcome back to Thursday's Theology. Uh, my name is Jeff and I'm your host. Um, so we are starting a new series uh, this week entitled What's That? And uh, the, the whole purpose behind this particular um, series is the fact that there are some words and phrases that we throw around in church that I think um, need a lot of expl uh, explanation and background and context. Uh, for instance, like uh, grace or sanctification or any number of these words that we kind of throw around that we kind of just expect people to know what they mean. Um, and yeah, sometimes it we just need to explain it a little bit better. So. Uh, I wanted to kind of spend the next few episodes kind of diving into that and seeing uh, what are some popular words and, and phrases and imagery that we hear about in churches that um, just kind of don't make sense. Um, so I thought it would be an interesting uh, place to start by asking the question, what is the church? And uh, the reason being is because I have a bad feeling about this. Oh, it wasn't that bad. Oh. Well, okay. Well, there we go. Um, and the reason I wanted to start with this one is because, uh, for me, I had a lot of really um, substantial misconceptions about what the church was uh, growing up. Um, I had kind of this idea that uh, the church was just kind of a building or um, a place, a physical place, a physical uh, location, um, yeah, so I just had a lot of misconceptions about what the church was. Uh, now, what I've come to realize in my own uh, kind of personal theological development is that the church itself is much more um, than just a physical building. A church can happen in a physical building, but it's not the physical building that makes up what the church is. So I want to make sure that that's clear as we go forward. Um, but... As always, if you missed last week's episode, uh, I talked a little bit about my call story and how God answers prayers um, in the ways that we uh, need them answered and not necessarily in the ways that we want them answered. Um, so we talked about that last week, and uh, we also talked a little bit about how... Um, sorry, just give me a second. Oh, crap. Um, we talked about how... Um, there are, oh, I remember, uh, I also did the little Assassin's Creed aside video uh, talking about the shootings in Florida. I'm also going to link to that below. Um, I highly recommend that you check that out because it's very important that we uh, have an honest discussion about um, what happened and the fact that we can um, just talk about it uh, in community with one another, I think, is an important thing. Um, so that being said, um, let me dive back here real quick okay good um so that being said um we're gonna start this new series entitled uh what is the church so um like i said the church can often be this misconception that it's a uh, building it's you know the place where people meet and you know worship happens and blah 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 and stuff like that um, but I wanted to make sure that we, we kind of challenge that notion because I think it's a very actually an unhealthy way of viewing the church. And the reason being is because I think that if we tie what the church is to a building, then we really misunderstand what the whole purpose of church is. So, um, I'm going to be talking about that a little bit, giving you a little historical context, a little biblical context, um, you know, as always, um, for what I think the church is. So uh, to start, I wanted to give you a little bit of a history uh, context that kind of informs uh, the way we view what church is uh, in the modern t era. And that is, uh, in medieval Europe, the church comprised of... Well, let, me, let me get these guys out of here real quick. Um, the church was made... Oh, crap. Somebody's shooting at me from back here. Um, the church was comprised... Uh, it wasn't comprised. That's the, that's the wrong word. Um, the church was the center of town life in medieval Europe. Um, when whenever you heard the bells toll, uh, that's you, you knew that it was you know um, time to go to church. It was time to um, 
come in and worship and the bells are what called you to church so in a lot of ways the physical building became what church was so i think that that perception has uh kind of um tainted how we view church uh in our context because we still kind of associate it with this place that we go to we we go to a physical location in order to experience uh, church. Um, so in medieval Europe, that was the case because it was the center of town life. That's where a lot of things uh, were held, um, meetings, uh, important discussions, et cetera, et cetera. So um, yeah, medieval Europe, um, the church was the center of the town. So it was kind of an un uh, it was a kind of an unhealthy understanding of what the church is because it defeats the purpose actually for what the church was called to do and what the church was called to be as well um so that was medieval europe and um what i want to go into next is what i kind of believe church to be and uh again there's there's as with all these topics you know there's a lot more that could be covered there's a lot more that could be said uh but for sake of time we're just gonna kind of go over some brief thoughts I have about it and uh, just yeah we're gonna go from there um, so in my opinion the church is actually a um, <clears throat> a gathering of believers and what I mean by that is wherever um, there are believers in Jesus who gather together for the purpose of worshiping hearing the word and sharing in communion with one another and we'll get into communion next week uh, especially because I'm gonna uh, tackle the topic what is communion because that is a very uh, um, it's a very uh, complicated topic uh, sometimes, uh, as is with a lot of this stuff. But um, anyway, the church is a gathering of believers um, for the purpose of hearing God's word, practicing communion, and worshiping. Now, uh, remember, we when we look at the Bible, I'm going to try and give as much context uh, as possible to it um, in whatever capacity that we that we uh, use the the scripture. Um, but oh man, look at. That would take insane upper body strength. I'm sorry. That that just impresses me. Um, anyway, so the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, remember, Matthew is one of the, the disciples of Jesus. He was actually a, a tax collector um, who, uh, yeah, he was kind of, tax collectors were hated by the Jewish people. So um, Matthew's audience is that of uh, Jews and Gentiles, but, but mainly Jews kind of explaining you know, who Jesus is and, and how he fulfills uh, ancient prophecy. Uh, so that's a little bit of the context. So the, the reason why I wanted to bring up the Gospel of Matthew is because the Gospel of Matthew talks about, um, there's a verse here uh, where it says, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. And what, <clears throat> oh, sweet castle. Um, and what that means is that Jesus is telling his disciples that wherever two or three are gathered in the name of Christ, his spirit, he, he is present with them in the midst of that. So um, what the church is then is, is that it's a gathering of believers where the presence of God is uh, there, where the presence of God is felt and um, people are in community with one another. So I just wanted to explain that that's kind of my perception of what church is. It's where people are gathered in the name of Christ for the sole purpose of worshiping, hearing the word and sharing in communion with one another. Um, now this, another misconception about the church is, is that it has to be a big building. Um, I would argue that, uh, there's a lot of, of evidence in the new Testament of churches not being very large. Um, in fact, the church in the book of acts, now the book of acts comes right after the gospels. It goes Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and acts. Um, and what happens with the book of Acts is, is that it kind of talks about the early church, uh, what happened, who was there, uh, what was going on, uh, that sort of thing. So um, Acts records the, the, act, the Acts of the Apostles is the full name of it, and it basically talks about the early church and what happened uh, during that time period. So in the book of Acts, um, you have examples of a lot of churches being um, conducted inside uh, homes of believers. So they didn't have giant, um, giant uh, sanctuaries or gathering places. They had uh, the homes of people that they met in, and that's how that's where they went to church. Now I want to make something clear here, and that is that church is not 
a any old gathering of believers. Um, so, for instance, when I go to, to coffee with a student of mine, um, even though we are gathered, maybe even in the name of, of Jesus, uh, that is not going to be a church experience. And the reason being is is that um, it something there's something about being at uh, in the presence of fellow believers where you are experiencing something greater than you're going to in just everyday life. So the reason why I wanted to bring that up is because uh, there's a lot of misconception where it's just like, oh, well, if I can, if I listen to a blog or I'm sorry, if I listen to a sermon online from a, a popular preacher, then that's my church experience. And that's, I don't think that's, that's accurate just because um, there is, uh, don't die, don't die. Um, and that's just because there is plenty of evidence that shows um, being part of church community means gathering with other believers, not just, you know, on your own time when it's convenient for you. It means physically going and being in community with one another. So I want to make sure that we understand that because I think a lot of people, especially uh, younger millennials that I've noticed at least, is that they their perception of what church is is like oh well I can do it anywhere you know it's convenient I can I can do what what works for me I can go um, at my leisure and so on and so forth but I want to make sure that we understand that that is not what biblically what it is um, that church it uh, um, functions as so I just want to make sure that we know that going ahead of time um, so how did that not what Okay. Yeah, oh, that I guess that works too. Um, so yeah, the church is is uh, a gathering of believers where um, you hear the word of God preached, you you take communion with one another, and you are in physical community with one another. So I want to make sure that that uh, we understand that. And let that go. See if that works. Oh, that was lame. That was lame. Let's see if that works. Uh, maybe? Nope. 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 Okay, that worked. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, so, church is not um, just going to a coffee shop, hanging out with your Christian friends, and talking about the Bible. Um, it, it means much more, and it, it's supposed to be much more. Than just that um, so I want to make sure that we understand that uh, so again like I said naturally we can't do um, we can't do justice to uh, what the church is by just talking about in one episode um, there's far much more that we could cover about you know what the church is what the church functions as everything in between um, but again I just wanted to kind of give all of you kind of a crash course understanding and just my opinion of what I think the church is. So um, that's actually where we're going to end our discussion uh, this week on what the church is. I wish I had more time to dive in really, really deeply with you guys, but um, the point of these episodes is to give you a, a, a rudimentary... Uh, oh. Yeah, you better watch where you're going. Um, give all of you a kind of a rudimentary understanding of... Uh, what the church is and everything in between oh that was i'm glad that worked out um so that being said like i said we're going to end today's episode on that uh part of being the church is uh being in community with one another but it's also the practice of communion and that's going to be the subject of next week's episode of uh what's that and it will be um what is communion because communion very much like prayer is a key identifying factor of what makes the church the church. So I want to make sure that we understand what communion is because that is a very, very important uh, thing to understand um, about what makes a Christian a Christian. Um, and we are going to end this episode as soon as I um, get out of here because... I need to make sure that we get to a place where I can actually save the uh, game. And, oh gosh, I've got a rocket launcher. Um, so, yeah, next week we're going to talk about what communion is. 
um, because it's an important aspect of what makes uh, a Christian a Christian. So, um, that being said, uh, we are going to now talk about this week's obscure Bible verse of the week. And uh, remember, there's no context given because the point is that if you read the Bible out of context, then it doesn't make any sense at all. So uh, this week is actually brought to you by the book of Acts, and this is found in chapter 5, uh, verses 3 through 5. And it says, Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? Or didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died, and great fear seized all who heard what had happened. So like I said, my name is Jeff. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Thursday's Theology. Remember, if you like what we're doing here and you want to be part of the conversation, hit the subscribe button, uh, submit your comments below. Let's start a dialogue. Let's talk. Let's. If you have a, a different idea of what church is, let me know. Um, I've given you some of my thoughts, and I want to hear yours. So... Uh, like I said, subscribe, share the video, uh, include as many people as you want in on this conversation, because the more people we get talking about theology, the, the more we're going to be able to understand uh, a little bit more about who God is. And uh, as always, theology doesn't have to be complicated. It is simply the study of who God is.